Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. We are talking about drones or UAVs once again, but before we get into it, I want to mention two things. First of all, what is your favorite UAV or unmanned aerial vehicle? Let me know in the comments section below, I'd love to hear about it. Maybe some of you have operated on them or used them or maintained them or just have a fascination in them. I'd love to learn about what your experiences are and your preferences are in the comments section. Of course, leave me a like as well if you enjoyed today's video. Now, before I also get started on this video, when I think about drones, there's one thing that I always relate back to, and it's when I first got exposed to UAVs in my uh, younger days when I was in the British Army, when I first watched the Transformers movie here in Canada when I was on deployment, uh, was the first time I'd actually seen kind of a drone uh, in sort of media form and it was a drone flying in a predator drone flying into the original Transformers movie scene where they call in the strike group and take out Scorponok and all that good stuff and I loved that movie by the way and they got progressively worse as they go by um, but if you notice they actually use the same drone footage in that movie in a later movie and it really annoys me every time I watch those movies or you know go back to them I think why could you not have been lazy and found some fresh footage of that Predator drone coming in. Anyway, um, I digress. Today we are actually talking about Canada's uh, new enhancement to its capabilities with getting Reaper drones. Yes, Canada's Air Force is set to enhance its capabilities with the acquisition of 11 MQ-9 Bravo Reaper drones crafted by the US defense contractor General Atomics in a significant $2.49 billion investment. This development has come as the Air Force strategically moves towards automation and modernization, marking a pivotal entry into the utilization of unmanned drone technology within the Canadian Armed Forces. Notably, the delivery of these remotely piloted aircraft are scheduled for 2028, and the Air Force aims to achieve full operational status by 2033, which was a timeline that was disclosed in October. The procurement process involves a direct contract with the US manufacturer encompassing the acquisition of various components including weapons and technology under the framework of the US foreign military sales program. The inception of the drone program dates back actually to the early 2000s with Canada's previous consideration of an earlier version, the Predator. Despite finding a place in 2017 defense policy, the program underwent internal review. While two companies initially went for the contract, only General Atomics remained in contention after the withdrawal of the other. The original plan was to acquire the MQ-9 Bravo Reaper fleet by 2025, but delivery and deployment have been hampered by uncertainties regarding the drone's performance in the Arctic, a critical consideration for their intended use in Canada's northern tundras. Of course, it's pretty obvious when you're looking at such a vast amount of land and geographical you know, layout of our country here in Canada, um, the Reaper needs to perform in cold environments because primarily, uh, other than being used in sort of uh, deployments across its uh, operational usage, we have a system in Northern Canada called Alert, which is our basically Northern, I guess, patrol program, or kind of awareness program of the Northern regions of Canada, which are very desolate and isolated. Uh, this is what we need. We need unmanned aerial applications that can kind of scan and monitor that area, which Reaper needs to be able to do that. If it can't, it's gonna have real problems and it's a big investment, so we wanna make sure they're working properly. Despite the MQ-9 Reapers proving themselves in these challenging climates, modifications are deemed necessary by the Department of National Defense to withstand the harsh Arctic environment and include Canadian-made electronic surveillance equipment. The comprehensive contract includes the delivery of both drones and six ground stations with the main ground control center housing the aircraft cockpits strategically located in Ottawa. The military air bases in Greenwood, Nova Scotia and Comox, BC are designated as the primary stations for the aircraft, necessitating the construction of new hangars for the equipment support and storage. As part of the acquisition, General Atomics is committed to delivering economic benefits as well to Canada, potentially generating up to 700 jobs annually, according to information released with the announcement. Vice Admiral Bob Alchantonlet, uh, is the military operations commander, underscores the significance of drone acquisition for crucial overseas missions such as deployment in the Canadian Brigade in Latvia. This substantial purchase aligns with the Air Force's broader strategy, incorporating multiple new aircraft fleets as the F-35 comes into play, the P-8 Poseidon surveillance plane, and the new air-to-air -air refueling planes. While several nations, including the US, the UK, Italy, France, and Spain have acquired the MQ-9 Reaper, the unique challenges posed by Canada's far north emphasize the need for adaptations to these units originally not really designed for long-term Arctic operations. The operational requirements of the high northern latitudes and the Arctic necessitate the integration of satellites, aircraft antennas, and communication components not previously incorporated into the MQ-9 Bravo Reaper. 
Despite these challenges, the manufacturer asserts the aircraft's proven performance in the high Arctic, citing its adaptness in the cold weather conditions and the state-of-the-art anti-ice de-icing system. A notable demonstration flight was given to the 78th parallel in Canada's far north and was conducted by General Atomics in September 2021 with very good results. The overall summary of this, folks, is this is exciting news. You know, we've got a unmanned aerial drone that I think is very prominently required for our Arctic North. There is a lot of land. I mean, if you actually look at Canada's geographical um, size, it is incredible. When I first moved here, it kind of baffled me just as to how big Canada is. Um, we can't obviously monitor every ounce of land that is in that geographical location. So these applications really make sense. But of course, it's really difficult to put pieces of equipment like this in such terribly, terribly cold conditions for really long periods of time. Um, it's kind of like, you know, having a Honda Civic, you know, you can put it into an environment uh, that's really, really cold if it's set up to be, but Honda Civics were never really truly designed to be in that environment for long periods of time. So when you look at the, you know, the Reaper and what it can do, yes, it can go into Arctic environments, but for how long for? How effective is it? How efficient is it? How well is it able to conduct operations and missions in that environment? Certainly, I am not the subject matter expert to say so, but it's interesting to learn about the developments and the information that's being released about this uh, new development program because uh, I think it's really cool to have drones here in the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, being a member myself, um, learning about this information coming through the news is just really cool. You know, I think uh, the Air Force and those who I know in the Air Force, when they talk to me a little bit about this, they're also kind of excited. Yes, you know, there's some time ahead of us before it comes into play. Um, that is what it is. But uh, to know that we're actually going to have Reapers in our, you know, in our arsenal, I think is really, really cool. Um, myself in Afghanistan, I know for a number of times we did have uh, UAVs, Predators, Reapers and that sort of stuff uh, supporting me. Um, not directly, indirectly, but, uh, you know, we used to see them dotting around. Um, and, and, you know, we talked to some of the troops on the ground, especially with the U.S. Marine Corps, and they were saying these things are flying up and down the aer aerospace, you know, with hellfires blasting all over the place. So really, really cool bits of kit. Um, clearly, though, uh, a big amount of money coming out of this. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the coming years as to, you know, how the uh, aircraft and the uh, avionics are going to be integrated to Canada's needs and demands. But really, really exciting stuff. So I hope you learned a little bit about this today. And uh, maybe you have your own comments and opinion on that. Please leave it in the comment section below. I want to make it very clear. I'm not a subject matter expert for UAVs or procurement of these aircraft. For me, it's just sharing some awareness and information about it so that you can be aware that Canada is going to eventually have some Reapers in our arsenal. So really, really cool. Um, if you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like, and if you want to subscribe to the channel, click that little button, and of course the bell button beside it to be notified of any content in the future. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and catch you later. All the best. Bye-bye.